Hey everybody, uh, this podcast starts a little weird because, um, as explained later on in the podcast, uh, I moved, and as you can see in the background, it's full of boxes, I'm not a hoarder, I just have to unpack stuff, so, um, there was an issue with getting the podcast audio uh, running correctly on Streamlabs, which is like the software that I use to put out the podcast. Uh, so yeah, you're missing like the first few minutes of the podcast while I'm like frantically trying to figure out while we're live streaming, how to get it to work. Um, but we eventually get it to work and it's going to start after I stop talking. So, and also I'm going to give an actual slight trigger warning for this episode. Um, sort of like when I start talking, uh, in this episode, because I do start talking about some sort of dark stuff um, that has to do with, um, being in a crisis. So if that's triggering to you. It's just in the very beginning, like when I'm talking, um, but it shouldn't be that bad. So I think most of you will probably be fine. But just in case, if you're in a place to where you're um, not feeling great mentally and it, that might get to you, I just want to warn you because I've been there before where, uh, you know, certain things might uh, might get to you when you don't really realize it. So hopefully that helps you if you are feeling some sort of way. So yeah, that's it. And hopefully now you can enjoy the podcast. So here we go. Sorry we're gone for so long. 100% my fault, but I talk about it. So let's go. Be a Newton John. Uh, born in England, but raised partially in Australia. There we go. I think Australia. I that. She was a singer and actress. Uh, she had five number one hits in the Billboard music charts and has numerous songs in the Billboard Top 10. She had two number one albums and has won four Grammys. In Dang. 1978, she started in the musical film Grease, which became the highest grossing musical film ever at the time. Uh, uh, on the soundtrack, this, whose soundtrack remains one of the world's best selling albums of all time. Two of the songs she did a duet with John Travolta were Summer Nights and You're the One That I Want, were two major hits, as long with your. Uh, well. <clears throat> The single "You're the One That I Want" is was was being one of the best-selling singles of all time. Uh, she also had another hit from the show or from the film, uh, "Hopelessly Devoted to You." She would continue to make hits with singles like "Physical" and this is, "Oh, I Honestly Love You." She would also continue to star in TV and film roles. She was appointed Officer of the Order of the British Empire in 1979. And in 2020, she became Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire for services to charity, cancer research, and entertainment. Uh, she had battled breast cancer three times in her lifetime. Due to the pain she suffered uh, in her back, she was an advocate for the use of medical cannabis. Her daughter, Chloe, owns a cannabis farm in Oregon, and she died due to cancer at the age of 73. Mm. Uh, next up, we have Anne Hayes. Uh, and he started out playing twins on the daytime soap opera Another World. Uh, had she had a notable, notable acting in public life, uh, she would gain popularity in the 90s for roles in Donnie Brasco, Volcano, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Wag the Dog, Six Days, Seven Nights, and Return to Paradise. Uh, she also appeared in a few films such as John Q and some TV shows, including Hung, The Brave, and even Voice. Uh, I'm going to mess this up, but Suyin Beifong in the animated series The Legend Avatar. of Korra. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, became, uh, she became a subject of widespread media interest while dating comedian uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, after her breakup with Ellen, there was her incident in the Fresno area where she walked a mile and a half with just her bra and shorts, showed to a person's doorstep and said she needed to shower. And then after her shower, she said they needed to, we, they should watch a movie. That person then called the sheriff's office. Uh, Anne Hesh had told them, quote, she was God and was going to take everyone up in a spaceship. She later revealed that she had taken ecstasy earlier that day. Like on, you several, do. Yeah. on several national TV interviews in 2001, uh, Hayes stated that she had created a fantasy world called the Fourth Dimension to make herself feel safe and had an alter ego who was the daughter of God and half sister, half sister to Jesus Christ named Celestia, and she had contacts with extraterrestrial life 
forms all to help cope with her trauma. Uh, she Thanks. had talked about her trauma in her book uh, about getting genital herpes as an infant, sexual abuse by her father, three of her five siblings dying, and her father dying of AIDS in her 2001 memoir, Call Me Crazy. She would seek help and would later marry a cameraman and have a son. They divorced. Then she had another kid after she married James Tupper, uh, an actor, had another kid. On August 5th, she became involved in two car crashes in the same incident, uh, crashing into an apartment garage and then into a house. When she crashed into the house, the car caught fire. So did the house where she was severely burned due to her injuries. She slipped into a coma. And after six days, she was declared brain dead and was taken off life of support. She was 53. Did they say anything about uh, potential driving under the influence for that last crash? So the no, LA County yet. Sheriff's Department said there were some kind of narcotics in her in her blood, but they won't release what until after the full toxicology test is out, and they're predicting two to three weeks. Okay. So. It's kind of interesting how you know, the media is reporting this as somebody that, you know, they're not putting it as like a DUI or anything like that or, you know, some – some person high on drugs, you know, ran into a building and fucking caught on fire. You know, there's really no mystery why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems pretty cut and dry to me. That's why I was asking. I was like, eh, you know, but it sounds like there'll be full confirmation of what we all suspect in a couple of weeks or so, right? Uh, it's more like we're going to find out what was in her system in a couple of weeks. Because there's no doubt okay. that there, there were not. There was some kind of narcotics, probably a couple of cocktails. She could have been drinking alcohol on top of her narcotics. We'll find out. All right. Next up, we have Bill Russell, 11-time NBA champion, 12-time NBA All-Star, five-time NBA MVP player with the Boston Celtics. He's all. He has the most wins of any NBA player and is tied with Henry Richards of the NFL for the record of the most championships won by an athlete in a North American sports league. So to clarify, a lot of people were freaking out when I was talking to them about this. This is North American sports leagues, plural. So in the U.S., yes, he's the most winning athlete. But in Canada, so is Henry Richards. So they both tied together so people aren't freaking out. Um, so even though uh, Bill Russell was born in Louisiana, he went to high school in Oakland and attended the University of San Francisco at USF. He brought the school two consecutive NCAA championships in 1955 and 1956. That same year, he was captain of the U.S. Summer Olympics basketball team. He became the NBA's first black head coach in 1966 with the Boston Celtics, and he moved on to coach the Seattle Supersonics and hold, then hold the on, Sacramento Kings. Hold on one quick sec, though. First, not just NBA, but first American uh, professional sports NBA or uh, black head coach as well. Because well, when he did when he did it, there was no black coaches for football or for baseball or for hockey or anything else. Well, uh, I'm not there yet because I, okay. I had a little thing. But since you want to interject, yes, that is true. Uh, moving on, uh, he had an unprecedented, unprecedented NBA career. However, he was also a civil rights activist, and he used basketball as his weapon and shield. While in college, he, along with uh, his other black teammates, would be denied lodging in parts of America, in noted cases, Oklahoma, to where the entire team decided to stay at a dorm instead of, the, of a hotel. <clears throat> this continued into his NBA career as the black players of the Celtics team and also the St. Louis Hawks boycotted an exhibition game due to his fellow black teammates being denied service at a restaurant in Lexington, Kentucky. They refused to play and flew black home. Shortly after the uh, assassination of Medgar Evers, Bill Russell called his brother and asked how he can help. His brother said he can open an integrated basketball camp in Mississippi, the Deep South, in 1963. Just a quick caveat. Opening in an, an integrated basketball camp in 1963 was a potential death sentence. 
So having both black and white players out in the open, they were subject to being killed at this park in Mississippi or in a facility, really. Wait a minute. I, I thought that after slavery, everything was okay. <laughs> Who told what, you? What are you talking about? That sounds like something Proudy would oh, do okay. after he's no, watching his... Put that... <laughs> Uh, he he did it anyway. Uh, just a few examples of what he had to face back back in the sixties and even in the fifties. He also dabbled with acting, performing in a Seattle children's theater show, and an episode of Miami Vice. He wrote a provocative uh, autobiography called Second Wind. Uh, Bill Russell was awarded the medal the Medal of Freedom by former President Barack Obama in 2011, the nation's highest civilian honor. 2017, the NBA awarded him with its Lifetime Achievement Award. He's also the first black player to be inducted into the NBA, NBA Hall of Fame back in 1975. He passed away at the age of 88. Those right. wonderful Boston, those wonderful Boston Celtics fans. Sorry, just one last thing. Uh, never forget that they shit in his bed to send a wonderful message uh, to him, and he writes about it and several of uh interview or in his interviews and some of his books uh they broke into his home destroyed several of his trophies and rings and all of that other stuff so he was treated like trash not just in the deep south but also for the city that he won 11 championships for so i mean to be honest i had to like truncate a lot of what i reported because you can literally spend several podcasts on this man's life so i had yep. to like edit a bunch of stuff i didn't want to go too deep and just stuff yeah, like that, that would open that would open yeah. more because there's a lot more things that he did as yeah. an activist as an activist and still playing basketball that he did that we could literally spend the rest of this podcast talking about but i didn't want to go too deep uh what yeah. probably just did is definitely true there's a lot more instances both in his book and in interviews that he talked about there's a lot of historic meetings and stuff that went on but yep. i'm gonna keep it moving we got one more so last but not least <clears throat> we have uh grace del nichols better known as nichelle nichols i would uh, say who <laughs> uh the actor uh most well known for her role as lieutenant noyota uhura on the original star trek series an icon an icon and trailblazer <clears throat> excuse me uh nichols first worked professionally as a singer and dancer in chicago at the age of 14. Uh, she would eventually work with Duke Ellington and Lionel Hampton bands before coming to Hollywood. Uh, she drew the attention of Hugh Hefner for her performance of Hazel Sharp in Oscar Brown's Kicks and Company, uh, a satire play of Playboy magazine. Uh, she played Carmen Jones in a Chicago stock performance company in the musical Carmen Jones. Uh, before she was Lieutenant Uhura, she worked with Gene Roddenberry on his 1964 show, The Lieutenant. Uh, on Star Trek, she broke uh, a major race barrier as one of the first black women to play a major role on a prime time television. After she considered leaving the show after the first year, she recalled the conversation with Dr. Martin Luther King, which convinced her to stay. He told her, quote, when we see you, we see ourselves and we see ourselves as intelligent and beautiful and proud, end quote. She made even more television history in the November 22nd, 1968 Star Trek episode, Plato's Stepchildren. The episode is cited as the first example of an interracial kiss on American television. We kind of jump back to what, uh, what Martha Luther King said. Like, that actually makes sense. That, that's, that, that rings true because, like, if you watch a movie with, like, like for example, um, I'm trying to think of a good black movie. Like, for one example, there was a movie called uh, Dream Girl, which what I'm gonna get I'm you, gonna sucker. Get you, sucker. No, 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 no. Uh, positive. <laughs> I mean, he got no, him, but like, so. uh, like in uh, in Three Little Girls, it's a movie with Edra Alba where he plays a, a a dad who's trying to get custody of his three daughters because his wife is like a drug addict and her her new boyfriend is a piece of shit. And like that was kind of the first movie I saw where like a black male was looked at in a positive light of like wanting to be there for their kids. I was like, holy shit, like this is really good. But like. That that rings true. Like seeing black people on TV doing positive stuff, like, like the Cosby Show. That's a perfect example too. Uh, uh, minus Bill Cosby being a fucking rapist. But yeah, that was, that was <laughs> I was gonna example. say. Yeah. But that's I mean, true. Like seeing positive black people on TV, it impacts 
black people in the community. I mean, just I'm just saying. Uh, so this is in the '60s, by the way. Oh yeah, the same, same era as what Bill Bill Russell was going through. Um, has anybody seen Hotel Rwanda? That's another, I think, positive. Even though I, I think it's in Africa, not in the U.S. Yeah, that's another. That yeah, it's a very fucked up, depressing movie, but it also shows a black man taking charge and being a humanitarian, doing what he can with what he has to help a, a good cause. So. Anyway, moving on. Uh, for fans who did not know about uh, Nichelle Nichols and her singing and dancing career, they got a little taste of it in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, where she shows it off. Um, from 1977 to 2015, uh, Nichols partnered with NASA to help them recruit some of the first women and minority astronauts. Uh, Nichols also said her time at NASA as a NASA recruiter. She says, quote, science is not a boy's game. It's not a girl's game. It's everyone's game. It's about where we are and where we're going. Space travel benefits us here on Earth, and we ain't stopped yet. There's more exploration to come, end quote. She passed away at the age of 89 peacefully at her home. And that's the end of my RIPs for the last couple of weeks. Whew. That's a lot. I think that might have been your longest yet. It was. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of icons there that passed on. So. The show was done in 30 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Since we were talking about uh, Nichelle Nichols, if you didn't know, um, we had her on the podcast. We did a, well. I interviewed you her did. at we did an S class interview at uh, at a Silicon Valley Comic Con. She was here in the Bay Area, and this was probably the most iconic interview ever in my entire life because she's an icon and of right she is. She was like the sweetest and nicest person to talk to. Like I was super nervous to talk to her, and plus I couldn't. I I sat there practicing how to say. Aurora, Aurora, and I kept fucking up. Like, I was like, damn, I don't oh, can't pronounce it right. <laughs> just like now. And I, I like, I told her, like, I'm going to butcher this name. And she just told me, like, you know, don't worry about it. Just just go with it. Like, she was she, interviewing her was like talking to, like, my grandmother. Like, I felt like I'd known this lady for, like, all my life, even though, like, I, I've seen her only on TV. But she was so easy and sweet to talk to. But uh, one thing uh, kind of skipped over. So, uh, Uhura... Hura is actually it's, um it's um oh god what is it it's Swahili for uh was it heaven or angel oh um shit I I used to know this it's um I oh, think it's it's angel it no it's freedom oh freedom okay I'm I'm, I'm I'm looking at the, I'm watching a video right now and I had to I rewinded to that part but yeah it it means for freedom but um freedom. yeah she was. She was so nice to talk to, and like after we interview her, like I don't know, she was just the sweetest person to interview. But then, like after like a couple of months later, like we heard about things with like her her family and like trust issues, and like there's some possible like elderly abuse going on. And it's like fuck, man, like that's some fucked up shit. Because I remember at at Sandy at the Silicon Valley Comic Con, like they had her like in her own little tiny booth. But this lady was a, was a fucking icon. She should have had her own like role or whatever. And she she made that shit known too. Like before the interview started, she was like, "What am I doing here? Do you know who I am? Like, why am I sitting at this goddamn little dinky table? I'm fucking Lieutenant Horror. I need to be over there with the big names." And she should have been. And I think yeah. I hopefully they moved her. But yeah, man, like it. Like going back and watching the interview now. Like I could still see how nervous I was and how I I messed up in little areas here and there, but I don't know. It was still it's pretty. It, it was still a really memorable memorable moment interviewing somebody. And you know, R.I.P. to her. I know it's been a couple of weeks since she, since we lost her, but yeah, she was she was a great 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 person over, over, overall. But, yeah, I, <laughs> I remember being or just being in that presence. And watching Blue give his interview, there was like a different aura going on there. Like you can tell, she kind of like was helping him out, but she made the she made it conversational. She didn't make it like she wasn't diva. She was very sweet and nice. And I was like trying to listen in, but not be in the shot because we had a camera on. And I'm like trying to get close because we had two cameras on. Was it two? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I just I was but I only saw the one because I was closer to the one on the right. So I was like, and then I had um, at the same con behind us was, um, uh, I think uh, Michael Keaton. I think he just showed it was it was basically the cast of uh, Back to the Future. 
They're right behind us. And they're mm-hmm. facing. They're so kind not of Michael facing... Keaton. No, no, not Mike. Michael J. Fox. It's Mike J. Fox. Okay. Uh, Christopher Lloyd and um. And uh, I can't remember. Girlfriend. Oh, the one who plays the mom. She was there. Oh yes, yes, she was there. She's in the boys so too, isn't right she? Huh? Isn't she in the boys? Well, she, 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 she was in the boys. Yeah. She, yeah. Had, <laughs> she had a bad day at the end, of season one. Yeah. No, she I don't think it was Elizabeth Elizabeth Shue. Shue. No, it was uh, Leah Thompson, not Elizabeth Shue. Oh, okay. So Leah Thompson was there, so they were right behind us. So there was like all these stars. There's more stars behind us. I think Katie Stackoff was there as well. Um, but it was kind of weird because I was eavesdropping on. <laughs> blues interview but it was just like a it just it just had this aura about it about peaceful and kindness and just like inform, information exchanges because she told you know she told some stuff some stories and stuff that just like she's part of history and blue got to sit next to her and you know got to experience mm-hmm. you know her talk about her experience and it was a huge thing kind of for me even though i I was there. I didn't get to talk to her, but I had to live live vicariously through Blue. She was a huge influence on my mom. Uh, my mom, back in those times, she saw like this black woman on TV who was assertive and who was professional, and she was like a principal cat. She wasn't a mammy. Oh, ninja. Did we lose you? Oh, oh. I like how old ninja has worse internet than I do. I have two gigs now down but i'm like far away from the house i'll talk about it in a minute and yeah. he's like totally frozen well one, one quick thing i wanted to say while well, odin just frozen is that um there's there's two iconic interviews i've done uh nichelle nichols was number one the other one was uh like after i finished the interview with her like dude like like you're my uh not estrogen my um what is it what is it called testosterone uh yeah that's the opposite of estrogen no, it's the adrenaline. Adrenaline, adrenaline gotcha. was great. Okay. Like, it, my adrenaline level was so fucking high. And then after I finished the interview, I had to like just go somewhere and just calm down and have a drink. And the second time that happened was when I interviewed the the cast of Gifted because we had say. like yeah. one minute per per person to interview. And I was like trying to think of questions, and it was just a it was a it was crazy. And uh, after that, I like uh, I went there with Prodigy, and I to Prodigy like, "Oh, you done, man?" I was like, "Just give me a second, man. I need to fucking." Like chill because holy shit! Like I, I had the shotgun. That whole entire interview was like six different groups of people in like one minute, and just throw questions in and have people rush me through. And it, yeah, it was it was crazy. But the show Nickel definitely was my my top interview of all time. There we go. Now he's back. I said we get Janet Jackson and Anita on here. Then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, and I'm fucking nasty, so I'll call him. Yeah, Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. When I see her, I'm gonna call her Miss Jackson. She's like, "Why are you call Miss Jackson? Because I'm nasty." Yeah, yeah. Um, probably gets that all the fucking time. She probably does. So I should probably think of something <laughs> different. All right, Kronos, uh, you you wanted to get on in on in here. You fixed all the stuff with the chat and all of that. So yeah, I fixed the things. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah. If you're looking at, if you're watching the live stream, you look in the background. You're like, "Are you a hoarder? Like, what the fuck's going on behind you? Like, oh, there in a the garage? Show. No, so, yeah, not in the garage anymore." Um. I'm actually in another shed, which is kind of funny. So I'm not going to get into too many details, but basically the past like two and a half months have been pretty shitty for me and my family. Um, and it, there's like a culmination of things that happened and we had to figure out like some alternative things. And so we're in another spot in Chula Vista and we're going to rent for like a year. And it's funny because like we were trying to buy a house down here and like literally a week to the day that we that we signed the, the lease agreement for this rental property, our fucking house goes into escrow. You know, <laughs> fuck me, right? I mean, literally on my birthday, I got yesterday's when they said like they they agreed, and then today was like, was when I got the official you're in escrow bullshit. So, yeah, um, the new spot is it's pretty it's big. Well, it's not that big, but it's it's bigger than our than our old place. Um, it's got a, a decent plot of land and it has like, um, a sh- shed, which is what I'm in right now. It's bigger than the old infinity base. There's plenty of room in here. It looks kind of small right now because I have like a bunch of boxes and shit. But, uh, once I get everything unpacked, I'm going to get some more storage stuff and put it in here. It's going to work out just fine, uh, for the podcast and, and going forward, we're going to do great. Um, what's kind of cool is that, uh, I'm in like. I'm on the border of like Chula Vista, Bonita, and I'm in Chula Vista, but I'm on the border of Bonita and San Diego. 
And but I buy I need a wrap up. I need an apple bomb. Yeah, <laughs> she got it going on. She um, <laughs> and I was worried about like internet speeds because like Cox Communications is, is a thing down here, and I don't like using Cox like communications because they're fucking, that clip. Yeah, they're fucking oh. terrible. And also, oh. yeah, I'm straight, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I got lucky because, like, apparently, like this whole street has uh, uh, AT and T fiber up to five gigs down. And I'm sorry, five gigs both ways, which I was oh. like, because at the old place I, had, you know, in, in Hayward it was one gig, you know, down and up, which is fantastic. This place had up to five. I got two, but the Wi-Fi is like in the main house, and the I, when Prodigy gets here, he'll see what I mean. But like, the shed is not that close to the house, and where the actual box is for the Wi-Fi, it's in like sort of the middle of the house, so it's like really far away. So the fact that I can podcast from here and do my work from here and actually read the Peloton and all that shit from that far away from um, the actual Wi-Fi is pretty amazing. But I'm a, I'm going to actually do like an actual um, hard line drop. Again, I talked to the landlord. I was like, hey, can I do this? So I had a couple things that I wanted to do. He's like, yeah, it's cool. So I'll have two gigs up and down in the off in here pretty soon. Um, yeah, I got to say one thing I want to just – I want to say just for the public, I guess, um, I was going through like a serious crisis, um, of like last week and I had to actually call the fucking 988 number and I know it's uncomfortable to talk about, but I just want people like in general, if you listen to this podcast and if you're going through like some shit and you don't know how to like handle it, there's a number you can call. It's 988. It's a crisis hotline, otherwise known as a suicide hotline. You can call them. They can help you out. They can give you, first of all, get you through like whatever the fuck you're going through and then give you resources going forward. So don't be fucking embarrassed to to call it. You know, don't be, don't look down on yourself to get some fucking help because sometimes you need help. Like everybody at some point in their life needs some help. So, and it could be as you're an adult, I just turned fucking 43 today, you know, at the time this happened, I was 42, but it's, you know, it was only like last week. So, um, get the help that you need. Don't be so fucking macho or so closed down that you're not going to get help that you need. So I'll leave it at that. That's good. That's good. Good reminder. Damn. We, uh, man, we, we yeah, missed all we're already in. We haven't even talked about it. Yeah, I know we got I mean, a, we whole a lot bunch. of shit going on. So there's a whole lot going on. Let, let's get to some fun stuff, I guess. Yeah, I say we do nothing but fun stuff. All right, since why don't you kick, kick, kick. Go ahead. I got a perfect. I got a perfect. Since it's Wednesday, we should talk about Wednesday. Dude, oh, yeah, come on, dude. man. That was, that that's a perfect fucking setup. <laughs> come on, that that is a good setup, Blue. Good job, great segue. Uh, Netflix got a new series uh, starring Wednesday Adams of the Adams Family. It's live action. Uh, Tim Burton seemed to put his, get his groove back because this shit mm-hmm. looks incredible at least from the trailer itself at least and this is just my opinion it looked all it had all the whole creepy vibes to it uh wednesday is certainly front and center doing you know uh, her normal stuff in terms of i think she dropped some piranhas into a pool <laughs> to get revenge on yeah. some uh boys that are uh, potentially picking on uh pugsley um well, I, had yeah. a, I had a bit of an issue with that just because um i feel like the chlorine probably would have killed those fish but the school could have a salt water pool, which would have made sense. In the, no, the that, that would have killed them too, because they're but that would have killed them too, because yeah, they're freshwater but fish. But it's all good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, we, Unless you movie, movie magic. Yeah. But yeah, dude, to... I, it looks it it has that Adams family vibe, like the old school Raul Julia, early nineties only updated kind of kind of theme to it. Real and Wednesday quick, was always on. one of the best characters. Real quick, people were talking shit about having uh Gomez Adams being of uh Latin descent. And I'm just like, who are you people? Mm. Who the fuck it, are you people? That... Yeah. <laughs> like have you not watched any of the Adams his name is fucking yeah. Gomez. Yes. <laughs> yes. What the yes. What, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. What well, you, um, who played him in the original movies? It was um Raul Julia. No. Yeah. Oh, There's you're talking about the black and white TV series? No, no, I'm talking about the the movies. The movie the franchise. Movies with Raul Julia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's Latin descent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a, he's a fantastic actor. 
not only not only is he of Latin descent, he was one of the best to me, uh, Mr. Adams I've ever seen. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. He, he, he knocked it out of the fucking park. Um, I believe you can you can tell that they were they were fucking on like the 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 swag that he had on that movie, him and Marticia Adams. You they were they were because they. Their chemistry on the in the movie was really great, but you know they were just boning like their characters because they love each other. <laughs> they they even I didn't even brought it up like there was like, oh honey, what do you want to do tonight? Oh let me let's do that one thing I like that you do, and they you like oh they're gonna go have sex. No, he, she's got him in a fucking torture device like turning the crank. I mean that's that's just foreplay. I mean <laughs> that is <laughs> that's that uh, S and M that uh, Rihanna was singing about. Yeah. <laughs> The the funny the the funniest thing to me that went over a lot of people's heads with uh, the Adams family their over affectionate marriage was the the whole point like it obviously the opposite is what you uh, were used to which was seeing couples that really hated each other on a lot of sitcoms and whatnot and here was this really really affectionate uh, you know gothy gothy couple or whatever which was an opposite kind of role like a bizarro version of uh, the nuclear family so. That fucking but, worked, but yeah, but never talk shit about Raul Julia. That dude was a fucking man, and I'm hoping that this guy, uh, what, what's this actor's name? I, I always forget his, his Luis real Guzman, name. Uh, Luis de Guzman. Yeah, yeah. He's, awesome. uh, he's great. He's awesome. So, yeah, but he's for, not like he doesn't look like Raul Julia. Or he's not. Hold on, let me make sure I'm talking about the right the right guy. Yeah, you so, are. He's like a yeah. shorter guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you if you look at the original comic. So the original Adams family, Gomez is a short and portly guy. He's like a chubby dude. So okay. all the other depictions of Gomez, Luis de Guzman is more accurate compared to the other, other actors before him. Hmm. So to me, this is perfect casting, really. Dude, well, Luis wait, wait. He's, he's a comedian. But then they got Morticia as my girl. Catherine Zeta Jones, yeah, as Morticia, like holy, I, I'm watching it just for her. I don't give a fuck. She could be in one episode, and I, I'm still, I'm still about it. That's well, also Christina Ricci, who we all know. Is she in you, it? I, no. I believe she isn't. Or am I tripping? I don't think she's in it. Oh, let me she hold on. Be, let me check myself. She might be a producer. I think she might be a producer on the show, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure she's in it. Well, it, it's oh yeah, she's in it. Is it anything? says it on here on, uh, on Wiki, has her on here. It, it says it doesn't say what her role is, but it says uh, to be determined. Just the fact oh. that she's just the fact that she's in it is fucking cool as shit. Because obviously she used to play Wednesday and everything, but um, and the fact that they're focusing on Wednesday. Usually they focus on oh, yeah. Wednesday and the whole family. You know the whole family, but the 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 you know the mother and the father the most, with the kids being really close seconds. You know, especially with Wednesday, but. The focus on her, I think that's going to work because even in, did you guys see the animated movies? Oh, no. Uh, no. I've seen a little bit of the show. They had like an animated TV show. The animated, the most recent animated movie, and I, I shit on it a little bit before it uh, came out, but then I watched it. It wasn't actually that bad. It was oh, really? It was decent. It was decent. The animation looked horrible. It, look, it looks like the Transylvania, like that one. Get, give it a shot. The story when wins you over. Like it's a family movie. It's it's pretty decent. Um, okay. but well, yeah, I was say, I'm all bored. And, um, Christina Ricci was at uh Silicon Valley Comic Con one year, and I was mm -hmm. in I was in the audience, and like you know how they ask questions like that. And there was an image that somebody that was posted of Christina Ricci as um as Morticia, mm -hmm. and um, I went up to the I went up to the microphone. And I was like, hey, how would you feel if somebody wrote a script where we got to see Wednesday as an adult? And we can mm -hmm. see her family, and she was like, "If somebody gave me that script right now, I would instantly take on that role." And I, I'm, I'm, st I, I, I'm hoping that they'll make a Wednesday movie where she's an adult because Christina Ricci, she's up, she's up there, and she's not up there in age, but she's, she, she's older now. She's a grown woman. Um, I mean, we're older. Yeah, I'm, like you know, you know Christina. Because it, it's funny because when I went up there to to ask the question, I was like, "Fuck, was Christina Ricci Wednesday, or am I thinking of somebody else?" Because there's a lot of Hollywood actors that kind of look alike, but uh, yeah, luckily I, I got the right person because I've been super fucking embarrassing. Like, oh hey, would you ever be Wednesday again? It's like, um, that wasn't me. That was such and such. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. So the Adams family, the animated, there's an animated movie from 2019 where Oscar Isaac was going as Adams. Yeah, he did a good Charlize, job. Charlize Theron was Morticia. 
Finn Wolfhard, who uh, aka Mike from uh, Stranger Things, he was Pugsley. Claude Grace was Wednesday. Snoop Dogg was Cousin It. Like yeah. what the fuck? It was pretty good. The one who convinced me to give it a try was uh, Dirty Stew. Oh uh, shit! All right. Yeah, Dirty Dirty with my family. it was pretty decent. It's a, it's a kid's movie. Dirty Stew knows what's up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I totally forgot this came out. There's a sequel. <laughs> yep. Sequel came out in 2021, 20. Yeah. Sequel ain't bad either. Fits in the same kind of, you know, general, general genre. But yeah, this, this one looks on point and I'm glad to see Tim Burton again, being weird and out there and getting the kind of spooky shit down. So he doesn't have, uh, he's missing his people though. Johnny Depp and, uh, Helen Carter. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) He's like, all right, I need some new blood. God damn it. You're going to be in my next 45 fucking movies. (laughs) <laughs> those well, artists go to too. Dude, it's like we need, we need a lead actor and a lead female actor co-star yeah. it's always okay. going to be okay. <laughs> well, the, the, the reason why when I when I when I asked uh, Christina Ricci the question like I always caught her confused with uh, Reese Witherspoon like those two what? very fucking similar especially they kind of acted in the same kind of universe and circle like they were like always mm. in- no Christina Ricci was like super dark and yeah, she's way more gothic yeah. and, and doing but, disturbing like, stuff. Like she does this movie called Penelope, where oh, they yeah. try to make it all light and fluffy, and like it's like way past halfway through the movie, you find out she has a deformity. She has a pig nose, for like an actual snout. Yeah, <laughs> she's an actual what? snout in the film. It's fucking hilarious. It's like this weird yeah. dark comedy, but it's it's good though. Yeah, it's, it's good, and it's, it's so weird you get used to her having a pig nose that once she removed it, it's like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird weird. without it. It's, yeah, it's she, almost I, like in a, it's like in Tropical Thunder when uh, <laughs> with uh, with uh, God, Tony, uh, God, the guy who played Iron Man, Robert Downey. Oh, okay. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. How he played the black man for so so fucking well that when he became a white guy again, you're like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> wild yeah but, uh, dude, dude, it was a strange yeah. movie but it's good i i recommend it it's an independent film can't over with that family can't overlook the iconic fucking soundtrack from that movie mm-hmm. with <laughs> mc hammer. hammer yeah yeah <laughs> mc hammer doing fucking uh the Adam family fucking intro song <laughs> she was fucking great they do sure. what they wanted to do what they want to say <laughs> <laughs> that was going through my head too those exact yeah. lyrics the Adam family <laughs> so, yeah. Hard so yeah dude. <laughs> This is gonna be a great it. fucking series, and I yeah, hope I'm looking people. forward to this, especially because of Catherine's edit. But I do like Winslet's character because she's hella crazy. I'll never forget when they did the um, the Native American thing, when she played Pocahontas <laughs> and like the, <laughs> the camp counter shit, and they end up burning the whole place down. That was fucking wild. I could I couldn't stop laughing. It's so good. Absolutely fucking lutely. Uh, all right, so we got all kind of other shit. Just really quickly before, I know we got a whole bunch of other shows and stuff we're excited about. Um, Ezra's still Ezra. Yeah. Oh, that's your boy. That's your boy. Man, I just, I, I, I lost count. Uh, I lost okay, count of the sorry. charges. I, miss, I misspoke. That's your they. So yeah. That's your they. They your they? Your, they, your they? Yeah, that's your they. <laughs> they committing crimes and not going to jail. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. Why isn't he? Why isn't this dude in jail? Like he should have been in jail. Like he's he's committed a lot of crimes, a you lot know why? of crimes, and they're not I, I like some why. of them are. They're not minor. So no, I can say yeah, why? Because he's the fastest man on earth. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll run the law. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, nothing comedic about uh, the fact that there are literal victims. It seems like Kids. maybe even double digits now. Kids that are victims. You know? Actual Kids, children. women, uh, <laughs> random Hawaiians, like, <laughs> fuck everything yeah. about Mr. Ezra or Miss what they, Ezra, they. Whoever, whoever, whatever the fuck you want to call Ezra, uh, this is a true piece of shit, and uh, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen with this Flash movie, but... I'm so can, bummed about this shit. <laughs> I can tell you right now, the movie's going to suffer from just the publicity, negative publicity that he's gotten, like... So There's I, mean, I, could, I could, yeah, yeah. I, I could, I could see the just the average family, you know, knowing that Ezra's in it, saying, "Oh, you mean the person that abused all these people and kids?" Yeah. No, thank you. Even yeah. if they don't know anything about the Flash or, or usually like yeah. superhero movies, 
why you why are you gonna take your kid to see someone that abusive and that fucking criminally insane? No way. I I will he, say he did he go. Sport. Yeah, he did go seek help. I guess he got committed. No, and the studio. <laughs> yeah, said. I'm pretty sure the studio and his agent said you need to you need to do this if you want to bounce back. So he's in a uh, uh, some he's in a medical center on the East Coast. Oh. I I think Virginia or Vermont or something. So we'll see. I hope he gets the help he needs, but I also see that he committed crimes. So I do hope that some kind of justice comes out of this, not a slap on the wrist. Like, so we'll see. Throw this motherfucker under the jail. I, I'm sorry. I'm not into the whole, oh, you know, he, he went to some rehab. No, fuck that celebrity bullshit. You, there's real victims, like Chrono said, children, innocent Hawaiians, uh, women. Nah, he, he needs to fucking pay. And here's the other thing, too. I would be more sympathetic if it was maybe once. Dude, how many times? We've gotten on this show like five times and talked about how Ezra done fucked up again. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? You can't sit there and say, oh, I was having a mental health crisis for like fucking nine months. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, yeah, that's, no. that's just you being an asshole for nine fucking months or probably longer than that. I think it's, it's, just, it's been going on for a while and you were running from the like cops and shit like that. You know, it's before like, COVID. <laughs> yeah, man. It is what it is. Um, so we'll see. Uh, where where you want to go now? Blue. Well, I, just a quick little thing. So I, I really, like, I want the Flash movie to come out just because we get to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. And we get to see, like, what happened in that universe. That's the only reason why I would watch that movie. I, like him, like Flash going back into the past, into, back in to save his mom because he missed his mom and such like that. I don't really care about that. I just want to see fucking Michael Keaton as Batman again. Like, that. <laughs> that's the reason he's He's the reason why I like Batman. So, like, one little quick full of fun fact. So, if you look behind me, I just noticed this today. So, if you look behind me, you see that right there? Like, it's Batman. No. There's, there's know, Batman yeah, can, a window. They can't see it. Uh, <laughs> I can see it. Yeah, okay. I can sort of see it. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 my monitor probably pocketed. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited just to see Michael Keaton be Batman again. And if it gets canceled, that kind of sucks. I wish they would remake the movie. Maybe bring in um and um Grant from the Flash CW show as 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 the Flash. Just CGI on his face. It's all good. (laughs) They can do that, but they still end up having to pay him. I guess he's already paid since they're already got the movie going. Yeah, he. I mean, he he acted, so he definitely got paid. Supposedly, plays more than one character in the movie. Yeah, he plays just like in real life. I mean, no. uh, I, like more than just Barry slash Flash, like another character as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, seen the mean on, you mean like the character where he's like beating up Hawaiians and fucking with kids and <laughs> having a cold and shit like that? Yeah, it's just, I think he's that's messy why he, acting. That's why he goes by Day because there's Day, uh, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm gonna say that uh, his character, like him as a Flash, I never really liked him as a Flash. Until I saw the, the director's cut version of uh, Justice League, then I was mm-hmm. like, okay, he's actually doing Flash shit. Before he was like, I'm scared. I'm just going to hide in the corner. It's like, dude, you're fast as fuck. What's going to hurt you? Just yeah. run there and do your thing. And like him saving the people with the rock fall, that's like the most epic scene of his, of him playing that character. Everything else has been like, like the way he ran was really weird and this and that. And I don't know. Are and then like- we, and reached the movie, I'm cool with that. If they release it, I'll probably try to see it, but I we'll see. Yeah. Such a great, such a great might. it's sad because it's such a great iconic fucking character. Like and it's a cool character too. You know what I mean? Like he just fucking fumbled that shit, man. Brought bad actor uh, bad actor as a as a choice, and this person is fucking crazy. So it is what it is. Blue, where you want to go next? Let's talk about something that Kronos started this podcast with like way back in the day telling us that we need to listen to this audio book because the quality of this audio book was fucking straight out of the goddamn studio yeah. if you didn't if you didn't know sandman the dc comic graphic novel dropped on netflix a couple of weeks ago and this shit fucking hits it's it's the series is really fucking good it's uh, cat dealing is, isn't in it yeah, which is a little sad. weird now yeah, yeah, because I want her to be deaf because I just want to see those juicy lips. But uh, overall, like, 
this show is almost, I want to say, page for page, or at least audio to audio with the audio book. Because I, I never read the graphic novel. I, never, I, I haven't seen the comics, but like everything I've seen said like it's pretty spot on with the comics. Uh, I finished it. Kronos, have you had a chance to watch it all? No, I, start, I started watching with yeah. uh, with with uh, K, and I was like, I'm going to watch this, but you know, if you're not into it, then I'll watch it on my own. And that was like last night, and she wasn't into it, and I had a chance to watch it today. But I watched a little bit of it, and it, it looked looked pretty amazing to me. Like what what I was imagining for the most part when I was listening to the audio book, like it's it seems legit. And it's, I mean, Neil Gaiman does a really good job of like doing storytelling, and you know he was directly involved with making the show. So, and people were like talking shit about the show being too woke or whatever. But it's like this this is not a guy you can cancel off some shit like that. So, you know, yeah. The, I think the show was pretty well um, casted, especially um, Morpheus. He looks like that's who I imagine Morpheus looking like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like they somehow they somehow cast a skinny ass dude who's buff. Like this dude had like <laughs> body fat, but he had like his muscle tone was like super defined. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, Odin, you've uh, finished it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I finished it. What'd you think about so, it? Don't spoil it, but yeah, what'd you think? This, yeah. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I, I will talk about the first five episodes, even though I finished it. This was like a to be honest, this was a beautiful gothic dark fantasy show that like it felt like it kind of felt like a feature length movie watching the first few episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was there was so much information thrown at you in the first few episodes but they give it to you in chunks so it's easy to digest and you learn about all these crazy concepts you see these fantastic locales that actually look great you see weird and fantastic characters you get their backstory a little bit later but the thing is in all honesty it's a super simple fucking story the story is super fucking simple it's very simple literally the dude gets captured he gets out and then he needs to go reclaim his shit. It's literally God of War. It's from like <laughs> God of War two or three, where you lose all your powers and shit. You gotta gain them all back. Same shit. It's just the same shit. The only thing is they give you education about these fantastic um I guess they're they're abstract constructs in the form of corporeal beings. And you learn about them as Endless. you go through this journey. And it's just like there's so much given to you, but it's super easy to digest because it's in good chunks. There's a lot of callbacks and Easter eggs in the show. So, and it was weird to me because I was like, hey, wait a minute. I recognize that. Or, hey, this person mentioned something that I, I, I get. Like, I get it. There's some visual stuff that you'll see. I know a lot of people that were really into the book. I never really was. Actually, um, a friend of the podcast, Sapo Supreme, the guy who made our... Um, Amazon uh, app. He was trying to get me into this when it came out, and I didn't get it. I was like, uh, "What is this?" And he's like, "Dude, this is great. Just great story." It's like, I'm like, "Dude, this is literally depression mode. The comic, like, <laughs> I'm not interested. I didn't like the art." He was trying to tell me Batman was in it. I'm like, "Dude, this looks like shit. Like, I'm not interested. Why is Batman in this? This isn't a DC comic because at the time it's Vertigo." And Vertigo had owned, uh, DC bought Vertigo, I think, around the time or just before it released or something. So I didn't get it. Over time, people kept telling me about it. And then uh, it finally dropped. And now literally everything that was described to me back in the 90s is is literally on screen, exactly as it was told to me. I'm like, oh, that's actually really good. Neil Gaiman, um, once again, he's in almost every level of production of the show. Um, he's got David S. Goyer, oh. mm-hmm. uh, who's also pretty famous with DC stuff. Um, he's a director, writer. He's written for comics. He's written for movies. He's written for TV. He's done it all. Has he ever porn, though? I mean, uh, you know what? If he did, he probably used a pseudonym. So <laughs> maybe. I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of people did. I'm pretty sure Sylvester Stallone had a, right. had a pseudonym back then. So. But well, still. What's, what's kind of cool about Sandman lore is that, like, it takes like basic it, it's almost like a it, it takes like folklore characters 
and basically bring him into the the comic book world. And with like, with like Sandman, like if if you did the audiobook, because that's the way I've been, I've digested the whole Sandman comic. Um, they they do a really good job. Like they take a lot of the elements from the from the audiobooks and bring them to the show. But like, <clears throat> there's some things that were that was a miss. Like I didn't like the actress that played Lucifer. Like, uh, I, well, she's supposed to be. Well, she's supposed to be. The person I can't even say she, they are supposed to be androgynous, like mm-hmm. both neither male nor female, and I think that's like something that people maybe not maybe forgot if you read the comics or listen to audiobooks, like the character is not supposed to be like of one gender or the other. Well, like, mm, and I, I know for... Gwen, I know Gwendolyn Christie is like, she's not that androgynous, but you know, I mean. I mean they have I, to make her, but she's not in the show. She's wearing like fetish gear, <laughs> like she's yeah, in like, and dark wing. Don't get me wrong, I had no problem with it. I don't mind going to Christie in fetish gear. I, but my problem was that I was like I was imagining Lucifer being like fucking sexy, like just uh, you, mm. you know you know me because I'm the fucking devil. Like I'm I'm all your inhibition. I'm I'm what you want. I'm because uh they always say like. Lucifer is like the angel that was like the most attractive and the most like glamorous, the, the most attractive in heaven, yes. But yeah. also, lose so in the show, when Morpheus, aka Dream, when he meets Lucifer, and it's obviously not their first meeting, oh, but yeah. he uses old school, like old testament names with Lucifer, names that I forgot about, like super biblical yeah. old Hebrew names. I was like, I oh, too. Yeah, he brought that up too, and he gives respect to Lucifer because he's in Lucifer's realm, and he's like, "Well, I'm going to respect you," but he understands that Lucifer's the trickster, the uh, the liar, you know, the one that's going to try to screw him over, and so he's very mindful of that when he goes down there. With but I had no problem with Wendell and Tr- Christie because once again they tried to like downplay how attractive she really is. So they had to make her look kind of like a little androgynous, which is which is fine. But I had no problem with Morpheus and and Lucifer's meeting. Their whole interaction. They actually have a duel that blew my mind because I did not expect the duel to go down like the way it went. So I want to say that's the oh god, Cronus. Sorry, yeah, I know, I, that, that's as big I mean, as I can. Be. I listened to the audiobook, so well, no, yeah, no, but still, I'm. I'm no, no. Is so the in the, audio like the, the the rhyming or whatever, yeah, yeah, what I yeah. tell them, like they, it's uh, what is it like? It, it's like oh, I'm a snake in the grass and I'm a field mouse type thing. Yeah, like yeah, you it's, just it's like a weird hack. It's, it's better to experience watching it because it's actually really cool. Uh, yeah. I didn't expect it to go down that way. Um, there's actually a reference to a very popular DC um, theme, I guess. During the battle, so it's actually but really no, cool. And I believe in the, um, in the, in the comic or not in the comic in the audiobook, it's not Lucifer that participates in it, or it was it? Is it? There's a so basically it's almost like uh, it was like, like a like, different demon. It was a demon. Yeah, see, that's what, okay, yeah. that's what it, the other demon is the one that participated in that battle. But in the movie, in the TV series, Lucifer, the person's like, oh, I choose Lucifer. I choose, I choose Lucifer. Was it the Take guy on. with the, the, the teeth for eyes or whatever? No, 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 that guy. No, that's different. Yeah. So, that guy. That guy's actually awesome, even though he's yeah. an asshole. <laughs> he's awesome. Dude, that that whole hotel scene, like, Colonel, you read, you mean, you listen to audiobook. Yeah. That whole hotel scene of them, like, going to this hotel with, like, all the fucking, sorry, spoiler alert, if you didn't read the comics and you listen to audiobooks, there's a scene where they go to a hotel room, a hotel that's full with fucking serial killers. It's a yeah. fucking convention. <laughs> and the name of the convention it's fucking uh, the serial the, convention. Serial convention, and it's like, oh, I want to go to the serial convention. It's mm-hmm. Like, no. yeah, like, like yeah. it's not that kind of serial. It's the serial yeah. with an S, not a C. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you ain't getting no fucking cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, no, <laughs> no you ain't. That's you a, might that be too. being tempted by somebody named Cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, there's actually uh, another episode. Uh, it's called Twenty Four Seven. If you oh, ever yeah. worked. In customer service, 
Yeah, if you ever worked in a cafe, if you worked at a restaurant, if you worked in retail, this episode, that particular episode will probably will probably make you okay. feel some type of way. That was one of the other problems I had with the series. Hollywood, please, 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 can you fucking stop trying to do black people hair? <laughs> Red fucking like like twists, stuff like that. Don't fucking use a goddamn wig. That shit looks like boo boo garbage. Like God. Just, just have the person fucking be clean shaven. Just, just have like a tight thing. <laughs> fucking have the person grow out their hair. Have a fucking beauty person come out and twist her shit up. Stop it. We, we seen the shit in fucking The Walking Dead. Fucking, fucking Dr. Dre was in Walking Dead. His wig shit was <laughs> fucked up. Fucking the, uh, his the name's Corey Hawkins. Kingdom. What's the king of fucking that one with the tiger? His oh, shit was yeah. like garbage. Yeah. Like, but, but blue. It's funny because when you said The Walking Dead, I felt like Michonne's wasn't terrible. Uh, it was, it was decent, but then again, she was bald, so because I saw her in fucking uh in Black Panther, so 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 was so was King Ezekiel, the tiger guy. He's bald. Say, yeah, but well, that should look. I, so, I, I yeah, feel like they, they, there definitely uh, needs to be like uh. Like a black-owned company that makes wigs for for black people in Hollywood because they've been fucking it up for fucking decades now. Like, like seriously, like I, I'm totally with you there. It, like, I guess for for most people, it's probably not noticeable, but for like people you know that are like us, like it's pretty noticeable. <laughs> like when you can see like that complete cut, and then it's just like it looks like wool. Yeah. Not even like you know, not even like African hair. It just literally looks like wool, you know. It, it also usually doesn't add anything to the character. Like, okay, this yeah, character right? has has locks. Yeah, but it, it looks bad on them. Like, you, so <laughs> you know, like sometimes maybe in the Walking Dead post apocalypse. Okay, you know, obviously there's no barber shops, there's no clippers, and you're on the run. Okay, maybe. But sometimes they just put it on an actor, and it's like you look fucking weird, you know. I mean, if there's no barbers and all, okay. So you're gonna tell me you can do your own dreadlocks and do your own cornrows and yeah. and upkeep them in the fucking yeah. apocalypse? Like, I'm not buying that shit. Yeah. Like one of the problems is that like cornrows, like if when they're freshly done, like you can see like like you can see the scalp. Well, yeah. these yeah. like you can see fucking hairs. Like, okay, this shit looks fucking horrible. Yeah, they're like the thickest but, fucking cornrows. Was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, in this show, like the guy has, does he have? I can't, he doesn't have cone rolls, but his his shit just looks fucked up. And he's like a step under the CEO, so it's like, come on, man, like, yeah, he's a, he's VP, he's like VP of operations or some shit. Yeah, and he's, did, he, I don't did know. you see the the latest uh, Netflix series at all with the uh, the one Redbone girl? Uh, as the lead on Netflix, the Re- Resident Evil one. That one, oh, no. look, you just said Resident Not Evil. Yet. You just said the show with the red bone girl. Hundred percent, yeah. You just said Resident Re- Evil. Re- yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you had was red I was like, oh, what? What are you talking about? So half half her head is is like braided for I don't know weeks and weeks and weeks, and it's really crisp and whatnot. And it just it, you talk about it doesn't look very believable. Especially as it goes on, because she's got all this blood and guts on her, and what it's just, it's odd. Uh, so I'm, I'm with you; it can be off-putting at times. But well, especially it when is, you, especially when you have daughters, and you know, like when they wake up in the morning, like their hair is kind of fucked up. You got to fix it a little bit, you know. What I mean, <laughs> unless it's in like a really protected style, and even then, like the shit doesn't last forever. <laughs> so you got to get you know some flyaways and shit like that. Well, if you if you're running and you got zombie guts on you, it's even it won't last even yeah, that long. No. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's all good. It's I think, I think they, they did a really good job in um in Star Trek Discovery with um. Well, yeah, because it's Star Trek, mm-hmm. right? People yeah. want to talk about Star Trek being fucking woke. Star Trek has never not been woke, never, never. All right, they've always been on top of shit, social mm-hmm. issues, you know. All that fucking but, you know, gender, whatever, like all they've been on top of all that shit way before it was fucking popular. And people but, don't talk shit about the latest one. What do you mean, but, but they did do blackface. They did. They hundred percent did, but with, with the Vulcans back in the day. They did the job though. They did. No, it wasn't. Klingons, Klingons yeah. the Vulcans. And, and just to be just to be really, really clear, 
woke was an expression in the black community yeah. that literally dates over 100 years ago and was specifically about like in um lovecraft country where they're talking about all the sundown towns literally it was about black folks watching out for white racists lynching people that's what it was about so this new 2022 2020 usage in the white community of the word woke all of a sudden now has a completely different meaning and it just needs to be clearly said uh actually w kamal bell did a really good united shades of america from this season all about it as well but it's it's very funny when words get completely distorted from their original meaning and context i mean they and them have different meanings from (laughs) Yeah, language changes over time. Like I guess. 20, even 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, even they and them. So, hold on. First of all, two points. Like, when it comes to, like, you know, the woke movement. And yeah, you know, Prodigy, you're totally right. Because I feel like a lot of white people today, like, they, they're, like, them being woke is like, like a certificate. Like, they, mm. they, they reached a pinnacle and that's it. Like, they just, they've learned all there is to know about black people. But it's like, mm, no, you haven't. At all, like most people, just they, they learn certain things and then they think they know everything, which is fucking bullshit. Um, and then second, god damn it, what did you just say, old ninja? Oh, they and them. Yeah, the they and them thing. Like, I don't think that that's necessarily like a new thing, like at all. Like, I'm not the really pronoun? convinced anymore. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've been thinking about it for a while now because I, I I just went through like a a technical writing class like a couple Ooh. weeks ago, and and there's a new, th- there's a thing now with like technical writing with, um, you know, business acumen and like really learning how to like just give proper pronouns to people. And I was on a call with like mostly white dudes because that's my industry, I guess. And they were having an issue with like understanding like the they, them, blah, 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 blah like gender pronouns. Like, all right, man, let me just help you out. Like everybody on the podcast who listen to this right now, let me help you out with like understanding at least on my dumbass aspect of like the they them thing it so when you see a baby and you have no idea what gender they are what do you call them besides it, it. if you call them oh. it you're a fucking <laughs> asshole you'll just Damn say <laughs> them or something like that like what are the, like what's their name like you won't say what's her name what's his name you'll say what's yeah. their name or you know and if you say like what are they doing you know instead of what is him or her doing something like that like it's super easy to think. Just think about him as a fucking baby, even though it's it's very re- reductive. But that's the way that I kind of get through, like these quote unquote new gender pronouns. But they're actually, not really that, that new. That's really fucking clever. Like to look at it that way. Yeah, it's definitely helped me because I'm just like because there's been plenty of times where I see somebody that I have no idea what the fucking gender was, and I was hitting like this weird um, cognitive dissonance in my brain, mm. or I was just like. I don't want to conform with this new bullshit, but it's not really that new. But I also want to show these people some, like some sort of respect if they want to be called like something different. And so, yeah, the baby thing just came to mind. Cause there's been plenty of times where I've seen like kids. I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck they are. See mm-hmm. what they it, are. I just said it. What the fuck they are. Yeah. You didn't say it. Cause I would have said, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because like uh, with my son, we were at a party recently and these little girls kept calling my son a her. Like oh she, her her what she wants to play with this and she wants to play, I'm like it's, it's a boy. He's a boy. His name's Sebastian. He's going to be gender but, specific. He's a boy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a boy, but um no I like that I, I think that's kind of cool like saying the whole day when you're trying to talk about like a like a child like a baby, but uh but, yeah Carlos you you bringing some some cool fucking like reasoning to this because the other one i want to say that you you bring up is the whole like reason why you wanted to pay a to pay a duvet a duvet, duvet fuck um okay. bidet yeah god damn i've been drinking <laughs> yeah like the whole story about how like oh if you have shit in your arm <laughs> like you wouldn't wipe that shit off with with just a paper towel right you you wash that with some water or some shit like that like yeah i, I like that story can i just quickly say this though i need everybody to truly just calm down and not act like you're being shot in the head, though, if you get called the wrong gender. Yeah. yeah. I'm someone uh, yeah. I'm someone who has a first name that if you're not familiar with it, especially in a work setting, 
you may confuse my just by name with being me being female. No big deal. I correct people who don't know me, who write me emails all the fucking time. I'm so not fucking on. wounded. I'm not fucking going all aggro at them. Hold it's on, not, people. It's, they, it's, not, they don't it's refer, not the end of the fucking world. They don't refer to you as disciple of future. They call they just call you future. And you well, you know, I mean, it, it, it depends on the time. Like obviously, 2022. Oh. Yes, you have to. Okay, I'll, I'll just check in. But but yeah, I, I I'm with I'm with you guys. I just. I can't quite get it with the mindset of this being the end of the world offensive and it, you know, you, you, you verbally lynch somebody or something. I, I'm sorry. I can't get with that shit. Yes. You can, people make honest mistakes. Yes. Some people are assholes and do it on purpose. Fuck them. But at the same time, I just don't believe that another adult, um, saying the wrong, using the wrong pronoun, whether by accident or even on purpose is the most evil and horrific thing you could ever do to a person in the history of the world. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's also like with um, like with Bruce Jenner when he changed his name to Caitlyn Ka- Caitlyn Jenner, whatever. And he, like people are like, oh, you got to say his her new real name and stuff like that. It's like you got to give people time to fucking adjust. Like it, if I'm used to calling somebody a certain name and they decide to change their name, it's gonna take me a while to to say that other name. As long as as long as I understand that the name has been changed and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. This is how it's going to be. I'll, I'll, I will go on with that. But like, don't make me feel bad. Like me feel like a fucking shitty ass person because I said the wrong name. It's like, I'm just used to calling this person this name. Like just, just roll with it, man. Like, come on. Like, give I, give me know, time. I'm glad you both brought that up. But I'm, I'm belie- like, I think that more and more as time goes on, I think that those people that are like that are like in the the vast minority because I've oh, never yeah. like personally had somebody confront me over like misgendering somebody, and you know me and Prodigy we both have names that are not in English and people mispronounce our shit all the time, and mm-hmm. I haven't been misgendered before like Prodigy has, but I've definitely <laughs> people fuck up my name on a fucking daily basis. And uh, it's funny because, like, people that I work with, other folks I get work with, they get mad that people mispronounce my name. And I'm just like, dude, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, honestly, like, they're acknowledging that I exist. I, like, let's just fucking keep it rolling. Like, I'm not going to, because it's not, an, I'm not going to expect somebody to know my name that's not, it's not in English. It's not in your native tongue. So, you know, I get it. But yeah, I think if somebody was to, like, get, like, you know, super angry that, you know, I didn't know exactly, like, what how they would like to be i guess addressed without knowing them then yeah that's but that's also to me at this point in time in my life i think that's an extreme yeah that that so I, just, I have not personally experienced it's it's funny so i have a pretty average name my name's in the bible pretty it's not, blue's not my name it's why i mean yeah, it kind it, of is is, is, why? is your name jesus or jesus <laughs> it, oh so the short there's my name has two different short short shortened versions of it. There's a three letter version of it, and I hate being called that. I hate I fucking hate it. It's just <laughs> being called that is just it's like super. The, it sounds it's super corny to be called that, and it's super like white to be called that. And it's like oh god, don't call me that. I fucking hate it. And when people call me that, they're like oh hey blah blah blah. I'm like uh. Yeah, you're I like, like Burton Hale. Hale. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, like I just said it, fucking it, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so like, yeah, when people call me Dan, I'm like, uh, yeah, Dan is like some old white guy no. somewhere else, <laughs> dude. I'm honestly, I'm trying to like rewind time through like the decades that I've known you, and I've never called you Dan, Daniel. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. So the whole reason why I hate being called Dan. It's because of high school. There's, I had a friend in high school, and he came up to me and was like, "Hey, Dan." I'm like, "The fuck? Why does that sound so fucking weird?" Just, Dan, you're the coolest guy I ever know. Like, what the? That's what the? That sounds so fucking weird. But yeah, just, I don't, I don't like the name. And so I have like a, I have like a, a person in HR. She calls me Dan all the fucking time, and it's just, it's like nails on a fucking chalkboard. It's so I fucking hate it. But it, it, I get a lot of people. They'll see my name and want to call me that name. They call, they shorten the name, and I, I would top in my email, and then at the bottom, I'm like, 
Um, just a little FYI, I prefer to be called Danny. Not Dan. Or you call me Daniel. Or you call me Blue. Because Blue is my last name. So I let people know that they have options. They don't just have to call me my first name. They call me my last name. But, like, just, oh, man. Just being called Dan, is, and even though like a lot of people say like, oh, you know, Danny is more of a childish name. That's like the name you use when you're a kid. It's like, yeah, but it's just I don't be called Dan. I just sound so fucking corny and white. So don't call me Dan. So if you see me in public and you call me Dan, you might get booted to the face. Then you probably won't. I'm just fucking joking around. You might get a baseball bat if you're over <laughs> 240 pounds. <laughs> I was gonna say it too. <laughs> but yeah i mean yeah just, i'm just saying there you go all right um, <laughs> do y'all want to can, can i talk about it now finally it's been a couple Ooh. weeks i've been gone Wait, first of all oh i know what you're gonna talk about go ahead speak home one quick little thing, quick little thing. hi birthday Cronus. thank you i appreciate <laughs> it if y'all didn't see the next level birthday thing back here Dude, I there thought that was that little orb thingy from um from from Star Wars or Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Wars. The thing that Luke like practiced oh, on the practice, the practice oh, spot. Yeah. No, the I one that does operations, the one with the, like the little arms and like <laughs> the drone that like does the operations and like does uh, cool. surgeries and stuff. That's what it look, really looks like because it's black. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So I waited. 357 fucking days to get a product. And I finally Oh, got shit. It. All right. And uh, what is- it's as cool as I thought it was going to be. Actually, it, it exceeded my expectations. So I was talking. Oh, shit. I just broke my fucking mic arm. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, oh, right, oh, I got to, like, adjust this it thing. Dropped. So, bullshit for a second. Let me fix it. Uh, one quick little thing. Let's talk about Cronus' shirt because if you haven't read this comic, Luther Strobe. Is probably the most violent comic of all time. So Cronus is wearing it right now. This so Cronus, I think Cronus brought this this shirt onto the podcast too. So speaking of birthdays, but yeah, if you if you want to read a comic and if you're colorblind, you don't want to read this because they use so much fucking red in this because <laughs> there's so much fucking blood or <laughs> this whole entire fucking comic. But it's great. Now I'm I'm waiting for HBO. Hopefully Netflix even do it because they did it for Sandman. But I'm waiting for somebody to make a TV series of this because that that would be epic. Because DC dropped the ball when they tried to do um, Injustice, the Injustice game, because that movie, animated movie, sucked. They should have did an animated TV show. They should have, and- or like a mini series or something, like a limited series or some shit. They well, fucked it all up. It could, it really could have worked real quite well because I mean they had the Dark Side War, Justice League, Dark Side War, Apocalypse stuff. They yeah. Could've... Two or three parter, you know what I mean? Like they have a whole animated kind of universe that fits pretty well. You just have to do it standalone, you know? Yeah, like they 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 should have just did. I mean, because they try to do like the whole movie rush to DVD such and such, but they should have really did an animated series. But then this was kind of before was it before the pandemic? Because that kind of makes sense because they were just kind of rushing things out to DVD. But if they did, if they'd made a series of it on HBO Max. Yeah, it would it would have flourished because goddamn, there's so much content in the the whole just like the injustice universe that would have been just perfect for the for TV series. You oh, got it fixed. Yeah, sorry, I just like I got a little too violent. <laughs> <With my arm. laughs> hey, you got mic, man. No, I it's this is a new mic arm. This is like a Frameworks mic arm. It's actually really nice. I just didn't have it tightened down enough. So when I like moved the mic, it just like came off the fucking table. So. Um, you know what it is, because mono price, man. You got to keep that mono price thing going, because. Uh, yeah, this the, honestly, this microphone is really nice. It's the the fucking cables integrated into the whole thing. Oh, know, that's cool. So it's super nice, and it's uh, like it's adjustable for like the how much tension is like when you pull it up and down. It's cool. Anyway, we're not doing a review of this fucking microphone right now. <laughs> but what I will talk about is the goddamn Steam Deck. All right, I finally got it. Here it is yeah. in all of its fucking glory. This fucking, this thing is so goddamn cool. All right. This is one of my favorite new products in a good long fucking time. I think this is going to have repercussions on the gaming industry and the, in the PC industry in general. Um, it's just, it's really, don't get me wrong. It's not perfect by any means, but it's really fucking good. 
uh, one of the cool things about this uh, is that if you're already using Steam, which I use Steam a little bit, you can literally buy this thing, and then if you had anything in Steam, it just it just goes on there. Like, there's a bunch of – not everything is going to work on there, but a bunch of shit that you already paid for is going to work on there. And you don't, you don't have to pay for it again. Nice. It's, That's awesome. It's fucking – it's cool. Like, I started playing uh, – Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. I bought it like a long time ago, and it works on there, fuck damn near perfectly. There's a couple crashes that I that I hit, but uh, I just want to see how a first person shooter works. So I fucking downloaded it and started playing. And I was like, this shit works as good as when I played it on like the PS4. So, nice. and you're getting basically PS4 level graphics on this fucking thing, and it's it's amazing. It's it's built for, I want to say adult hands. When I gave it to 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 K. She's like, oh, this is built for, like, larger hands. So I'll say it's built for larger hands, not just for adult hands. Because if you're an adult that has smaller hands, then, yeah, that doesn't really work. But um, it's a little heavy. I think I had Prodigy hold it for a, for a second, I think, when I was over at his place. Uh, but it fits mm-hmm. in your hand really well. So the problem with, like, the Switch, which I don't have in the room right now, is that the Switch in the back is totally flat. But if you look at the Steam Deck, it's like it's not. There's actually grips on it, right? And so like, when you put it in your hand you can like grip it and it doesn't feel that heavy because like you're holding it like in your palm and Mm -hmm. like, so you don't feel like all the weight. Like I can, I can literally like lay down in bed and like and play with this thing and it's fine. Like it doesn't feel heavy. My, my hands don't get tired. I can play with it in any direction. It's fine. Um, it does get hot at times, but the pro the thing is though, is that it doesn't get hot in your hands. So it doesn't fucking matter. Like I, I had this thing like hot as fuck. Um, in like where the screen is and like where the back is and all shit, but you don't feel it in your hands at all as you're playing it. It's fucking amazing. Um, there's also like these uh these back buttons which are on like the Xbox Pro controller, um, which I haven't programmed in yet, but you can if you want. It's got like the normal triggers. Um, it's got the you know the the shoulder buttons, the uh the the thumbsticks are touch sensitive. Like, so, like the top of them, they they can it knows when you're touching them, and mm-hmm. one thing that's cool, which I didn't know until I bought this, but there's already an upgradable, which already existed, thumbsticks for this. Oh, I actually wow. was like literally solder one fucking wire on, and it fits totally like normally, and basically what it is. So these ones are like um, it's like a physical thing that's moving around when you move it, um, but the upgraded ones are electro electrostatic. And so the ones when you physically move around, um, that can lead to controller drift. But the the new ones are are the ones that are already out. It's electrostatic, so there's no controller drift, and they're way more sensitive. And you can program it to the sensitive sensitivity that you want on this fucking thing. So it's amazing. There's a, a, there's two trackpads on here that work really well because when you bring up like the the Linux mode, because basically when you, when you get this thing, you get the Steam OS, but then you also get like like a Linux part of it. You can switch between the two. And when you go to, like, the Linux part, like, it's really hard to, like, use, like, your finger because everything's fucking small as shit. But using the thumb pad and, like, just clicking down, like, it works really, really well. Um, uh, go ahead. Question. How big is it compared to the Switch? It's bigger than the Switch. It's bigger than the Switch? Okay. Yes. By, I'm not going to say considerably, but it's by a very noticeable margin. I wish I would have brought my, one of my Switches in here. I don't think I – no, I don't have one in here. I have two, but I, I don't have any of them in there. Yeah, it's 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 a lot bigger. Um, would you say that um, this? If would you say this is uh, better than the the PlayStation Vita? Yes. But and so this is better than the Vita and the Switch, and it, this this is basically this is the best handheld I've ever used, like by far. And it's not it's not even fucking close. Um, and one of the main reasons why is because first of all, like Steam shit works on here uh, normally. Second of all, if you want to have an emulator, this thing is the fucking perfect emulator for, like, anything. Uh, you can yeah. download, like, basically any, any emulated game, and it'll fuck you. I mean, illegally. Or, there's even legal ways to do it, too. If you want to do it illegally through ROMs, you can do that on here. There's, there's tools for it. It's super easy to look up and figure out how to fucking do it. Um, I haven't gotten to there yet because I've been going through some shit, but that is on my list. Um, okay. And... You can put Windows on there if you want to. You can cool. um, you can use this as, a, as your fucking computer. You can use this bitch as your fucking desktop. Legit as your desktop if you wanted to. 
Um, can't you, if you want? What? Can't you dock it? Yes. Well, the, yes. But so the Steam dock is not out yet, but JSOX, which is a, like a third party uh, entity, they make a dock for it. And I like kind of jerry rigged a dock. Um, I don't have it here with me because I ordered a dock off Etsy. And it came with like a, a tape that you can put like a because so basically you can use any almost any USB C dock with the Steam Deck. You could even mm, use a, a nice. fucking dual monitor dock USB C if you wanted to. You you can. Um, and so I got that. I just kind of slapped it on the back of this fucking dock, and it works. And I, and I've even I've docked it on this like Jerry rig dock, and I've actually plugged in my PS5 controller into the dock and it works fucking perfectly seamlessly with it like everything just fucking works yeah and i so what's what's crazy is that i can literally dock it or just plug in my my, you know my ps5 controller and play god of war or you know spider-man that's for the place the ps5 all that shit and it it works seamlessly and you can adjust shit like it, it works really fucking well it it honestly for the for the price, people are saying it was like expensive. It's like the one that I got is basically it's a five twelve gig one, and it's it's basically seven hundred dollars after taxes and all that shit. Ah, so that's that's a fucking cell phone. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's a cell phone. Yeah. yeah, and for me, it's it's well worth it. Like, I've I've gotten so much more joy out of this thing than I thought I was going to. Well, but also, I mean, just to point out, and I don't have one yet, but. You get the Xbox Live stuff. Yes, you can. Right. Yeah. And and then Sony has a strategy of releasing a whole shit ton of their games on PC yeah. that I'm assuming you could play as well. Yeah. Like uh, Spider Man yeah. release, God of War. Yep. Both of those you can play on here. Elden Ring came out. I can play it on I played it on here. I play I finally mm-hmm. played fucking Elden Ring. Wow. It's actually better that. than Bloodborne, as far as I'm concerned. Look um, at that. Yeah. But what got you get me? The- Oh, go ahead. Say, no, go ahead. Say again. I was gonna say, uh, you, you get how far uh, have you gotten in there? Have you got like past the market or? Yeah, so not very far, and I'll, I'll explain to you why in a second. Here, it's uh, actually, so it's cool playing first party games on here, but I'm actually enjoying more of the indie games hmm. on this thing for some yeah. reason. <laughs> indie games are always fun. Yeah, and this one is like really highlighting indie games for me. So that's what I'll get into. Um, hold on. Let me hold on before I get into the fucking the games that I'm playing right now. Let me tell you the things that I would like to improve. Well, some of the things that are cool about this is that it's easy to fucking take apart. I haven't taken this one apart yet, but it's it's easy to get in there and replace parts. Okay, so that uh, Steam did a really good job. I'm sorry, Valve did a really good job of making it upgradable and like you know kind of DIY ish in this cool. thing. Um, I fix it already has like basically all the components that you need for this batteries, screens, um, all a bunch of other things. You, you can upgrade the internal storage for this, um, a bunch of other shit. Uh, I really, one of the things that I would like to see with this is an OLED screen. I think that's, that's kind of, I don't want to say it's a downfall, but it's definitely something that I would pay extra for. So I'm waiting for somebody to, um, come out with like the upgraded screen for this so i fix it already has so i got the 512 gig one and it comes with a, a matte screen which is a better screen than the other two versions of it yeah you can buy for i think it's like 250 bucks or maybe even less than that um what i want to see is somebody actually have the oled screen for this because oled just looks like when, when i look at like like a switch the switch oled next to this the Switch OLED is like way more vibrant than this screen. It's not a better like. It's like a cell phone. Yeah, for if you have an OLED cell phone, yeah. Um, but this can technically do, I think, higher graphics. But it just it the the colors are way more vibrant on an OLED screen. The blacks are blacker. The colors pop way more. They need to have an OLED version. But I also understand that you know Valve needed to keep the keep the price down. But I, I would have paid an extra. Um, Two three hundred dollars. Wait, wait. To get an OLED so, screen? with the OLED screen, is the blacker? Is it blacker than black? It's blacker than black. It's black. Times infinity. <laughs> I'm just saying. So yeah, I mean, wait. Uh, so a quick little thing with the prices. So it you can buy the 64 gig version 
for four hundred. Yeah, don't buy it, that one. Okay, but it, it it has a EMMC screen, but I don't know drive, but it's five twenty nine, five thirty for uh the two fifty to two hundred fifty six gig, and then it's six forty nine for the the five twelve gig, which is what Chronos has right now. Yeah, so this is one thing. So th- one thing that's actually a little bit di- this way and it's some disappointments. So I'm used to playing PS5 shit, all right? So where my the load screens are basically non-existent or fast as fuck. You're not getting that with the fucking Steam Deck, okay? You're going to hit some games have longer load screens like PS4, PS3 era load screens. Like you have legit load screens, and that's annoying to me. Um, but, well, also, you know, when you're talking about like the different levels of you know, storage. When you, because it has like a, a mini XD card in there, and if you put shit on your mini XD card, it basically loads in the same speed as the internal storage. So if you happen to buy one of the lower tiered ones, you're going to be fine by like just getting a larger XD card and using that as your storage. Like that's fine. And you could also, you could, you could also still install a larger capacity um, internal storage device if you want to. You, you can do that. So if you want to buy a cheaper one just to save some money and then do like all the DIY shit yourself, um, you got to reinstall SteamOS, but you know, there's that's Steam or Valve has put out the SteamOS as a downloadable and they give you directions on how to like reload your shit. So it's not impossible to do. Um, it's just you know, th- when you get the the five twelve, you're just getting a better screen, sort of, because it's matte, and the, the matte screen is nice How? if you're outside. How's the battery life? Uh, it's hit or miss. It depends on what you're fucking playing, and so that's that's another thing that comes into like what games am I playing, and they're not like I think Elden Ring. I I might get maybe three hours, and that's stretching it. Maybe three hours. Um. Yeah, I think they were advertised for either were. It- at least on their website, it has uh, anywhere from two to eight hours. Yeah, it depends on the like, game. That's a big fucking window. <laughs> yeah, because it, it depends on the game. Because like when when it, when you boot up like Elden Ring or some other like when I was playing like Call of Duty, like yeah, the fucking fan was on. It's not super loud, but I mean it's noticeable. And when I'm when I move my hands away from like where my hands are supposed to be, you can definitely feel the heat. So so you, you know it's doing some work. Um, let me talk about some games that I'm playing real quick. Um, so if you happen to get a Steam Deck, uh, actually, just in general, I, there's a game out there called Vampire Survivors. This game is basically fucking heroin. And it's the most <laughs> ridiculous fuck. If I explain to you this game, you're going to be like, Cronus, you're fucking full of shit. All right, listen, there's a game out there that's on Steam where there's literally no attack buttons. All you do is move around, and it's fucking heroin. Like, literally, you start the... It's super 8-bit, it's top-down, and you have to pick up, like, items and shit like that, and mm-hmm. eventually... I, I can't even, like, really... I, I need to, like, play the game and show it, like, as I'm explaining it, to, like, really show, like, how addicted this game is. This is the most ad- addictive game that I've played in probably 10, 15 fucking years. <laughs> and there's literally no fucking attack button. All you do is move around. And we have to pick up, like, weapons, and the weapons are timed. And you have to figure out, like, the synergy between weapons and defensive shit. At the same time, like, hordes of shit are coming at you. And when I say hordes of shit, there's so many things on the fucking screen that if you try to stream it, the stream quality fucks up. <laughs> like, literally. There's, like, li- I've had hundreds of, like, enemies on the screen at the same time on my Steam Deck, and it's running just fine. But I've watched the same scenes on like some streams, and you'll see like where it's all like pixelated and all fucked up. But that's not not how it looks on the actual device. It, it's like it's it's really weird. It has to do with like compression algorithms. Um, but yeah, that's Vampire Survivors. If you have if you play PC games at all, um, or you have a Steam Deck, which basically you have a PC, but um, <laughs> get that game. Number one, it's like three fucking dollars. So just just get it. It's like crack. So just get it. Um, I just I played um, Have a Nice Death Day for a while, but I hit on the Steam Deck. I was playing it solid for a good week or week and a half, 
And now, like the last time I tried to play it, I kept it kept crashing at the same part, and it's at the very beginning, and I have no idea why. Um, but then I started playing um, Vampire Survivors, and I just picked up um, the Cult of the Lamb, and that is one of the coolest games I've played in a while as well. It's like this cool like rogues like game that you have, where you have to re, where you have to like have like your own cult of people. You have to like have them worship you and like get all these fucking resources and then go out and like kill all these fucking god mini gods and shit like that as a lamb. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I might do like actual reviews for some games on this fucking shit because it's hard to explain some of these things in a short time frame, but it's a lot of fun and having them hey, in like a hand form. What's up? Yeah, we have Twitch. We have Twitch. You can do a review on Twitch. Yeah, but I, I gotta find my fucking. Way... I gotta find my uh, uh, Elgato thing. Uh, um, mm-hmm. I was gonna say we also had a secondary uh, friend of the podcast, uh, uh, B Boy. He was like raving about that that Cult game, of the talking about. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was like saying like you can have like weird. You he said you can turn it into a sex cult, like literally mm-hmm. you can have them mate with you or something weird and you can actually sacrifice members oh yeah i've sacrificed one at least one so yeah (laughs) he wanted it also another guy wanted to eat a bowl of shit so oh all right i'll make you a bowl of shit here you go and then he got sick so it's it's a it's a twisted version of fucking organ trail like (laughs) (laughs) you gotta do what you gotta do to get to survive dysentery but (laughs) but apparently as a cult leader it gives you a lot of options you can recruit and do weird rituals or makeup rituals, like all kinds of stuff. But apparently, it's like super addicting. Yeah. You know what's really cool about Steam with Steam, um, their their um, platform, whatever. Especially when it comes to the VR world, because the VR world, like you can like you can download a lot of indie games for VR with with um, Steam. But what's what's really cool is that like, I mean, eight. I haven't I haven't I haven't hooked my eight two five in a fucking for long as fucking time, but like. The indie games, like, it's just the fact that they're a lot of them are free, so you can download and play them and such as that. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, or super cheap, like 99 cents. But then also, there'll be like, like, I have a if there's a game I like, I'll put put myself on a watch list, and you get like email saying, like, oh, there's a Steam sale, and this game is now 99 cents, so fucking pay for it now and buy it. And like, it's Steam is a really good platform for, for, for at least for gaming, I think, for um. Tomb Raider. I have I have a copy of Tomb Raider on the PC because when I got my PC, it came with a copy of Tomb Raider and it oh, was through shit. Steam. Mm-hmm. And like I was able to play Tomb Raider through Steam in VR, which was fucking nuts. That sounds <laughs> crazy. It was really nuts. Like, like, like yeah. Uh, wait, when you look down, could you see titties or, or not? No, uh, you could see titties. Uh, Look, I like I like sat down in the woods and sat down and squatted and looked down and uh, no, there's nothing no, there, no titties. So <laughs> I keep. I keep hearing really uh, none of us have it, but apparently the Epic Store Steam's like rival is actually pretty good in itself. Yeah, like I have it. Yeah, and... you have it. Well, I thought you didn't get it. No, no, no. I have Epic Store on my PC. I'm like my laptop, but you can yeah. get it on your Steam Deck as well. There's like workarounds oh, no for it. Same thing with uh, Origin. There's like you can get a whole like basically everything you can think of. You can probably get on your Steam Deck. Even okay. games that they say are, are not compatible with your Steam Deck. You can use Proton <laughs> to get it to work. <laughs> so, like, awesome. they've, they're have they really, like, embracing, like, the whole, like, PC mentality on, like, just getting shit to work. Even, like, getting, mm. you can get Windows on here. Like, you can literally yeah. put Windows on here. And you can I feel like, boot. Yeah. I, I heard you, I heard, like, that was a secret, I'm using air quotes, quote, unquote, secret function that you could do. But apparently everyone's like, dude, you're, you know you're going to end up using Windows at one point. But yeah, apparently people were are were doing that day one, and uh, I've used Origin. I'm not a huge. I've used Origin way back in the day. I'm I've never been a huge fan. I feel like it's super lacking. I mean, they got it is. so is epic, know, but yeah, we'll Steam's, yeah, but, Steam's kind of the way to go for now. Yeah, but I, I feel I, like Origin's got left in the dust, and they're still promoting like a bunch of stuff that like I feel like doesn't matter anymore. Well, look, I, look, I did a quick little Google search to see, like, oh, can you run a PS5 on the Steam Deck? And there's, like, 15 videos on how to do that. I mean, wow. well, you can stream it, so. But look at look at the influence with Valve, though, uh, back to Steam. Like, they certainly uh, had Sony, uh, even Xbox, 
uh, having those fire sales and whatnot. Like a lot of that was trying them trying to emulate those steam sales where, oh, yeah. you know, or get close to it. You know what I mean? So you see, there's certainly a trend fucking setter. All those summer sales, winter sales, fall sales on PlayStation where they try to notify you of this game is almost fucking free or less than $5. I That's mean, yeah. so, to be fair, every single platform, they do all those sales literally, the, if not the same fucking day, the same week. Yeah. Like almost every time. Like the summer sale, I was actually telling uh, Prodigy about the summer sale. It was literally a day behind like the Sony one was a day behind like Steam and, and X- Xbox, like literally yeah. one day behind. I think Epic was like the same week or like the two days before the winter one is usually like Black Friday. But there's sometimes yeah. there's also another one in December, like where everyone's already thought they came up big, like a week and a half later. There's like a, a quick little winter sale. You can get stuff at like 75 percent off and whatnot. Uh, actually, Prodigy's caught me up on some stuff. He's like, "Hey, did you know like you know this is on here?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And I go and look. Sure enough, it's on like different platforms, both PlayStation and Xbox. Huge fucking sales. So they they they've been doing this with each other for years now. For real. All right, real quick, I want to talk about one last thing about the Steam Deck, and then I'll be fucking done. All right. <laughs> now nah, there's gonna be more. Just next go next ahead. episode. Yeah, next I'm loving episode. I'm loving the Steam Deck because I'm like. I've been interested. Yeah, I'm about to get one. I mean, even more. more well, I mean, you're not going to get one this year. I mean, if you oh, yeah. it before, you would have, but I, now, yeah. No, no, no. Put it open now and get it next year for my birthday. Yeah, well, you yeah. can get it early next <laughs> I'm, year. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, So I was looking. Oh, old Ninja's like frozen again. Anyway. Yeah. Um, So I was looking at like getting like some accessories for the Steam Deck like early on. um, And I really wanted to get like a. A protective case, not a protective case, like just protection around it. And I hate to do this because, like, so I, I know that there's like a whole bunch of like you know YouTubers and streamers and all that stuff that talk about D brand, like they're the second oh, coming of Jesus. Yeah. All right, but I gotta say I, I ordered some shit off of D brand, and I'll give you a caveat: the thing I ordered is fucking hard to install. All right, I, I know that because I watched the video, and I had a guy, I had to buy a fucking heat gun. To fucking install it. I haven't installed it yet, but I know it's going to be a pain mm-hmm. in the ass. All right. But I got to say, D brand, holy fucking shit, you get accolades just for your fucking packaging alone. Um, so, <laughs> like, the, the, the envelope that this fucking thing came in is, like, cool as shit. So, this is, like, the envelope they came in. Like, look how the fucking hell? cool that is. Shit. Like, look how fucking cool that is. That's pretty fucking sick. And that is, I, I do like that. I like that packaging. Yeah, and this, that looks, that looks, it looks like you're holding a laptop. Yeah, and th- this is not a paid segment. All right, the D-Man is not paying me. I've I've not talked to them at all. I just bought some shit from them uh, because I want to get a carbon fiber like uh, protection around it. Uh, but this is like, and when you get like the actual like pieces in, like this is what it looks like. Like they give you like a really cool like sorry. Right pre-cut yeah like it looks dope it's gonna be hard to install because this, this thing is fucking curvy yeah <laughs> the, way, the way i like my women um but yeah it's like, like it's cool so and um i got some tempered uh glass screens for it and it comes in this thing which is this is the steam deck logo right here and then when you open it like it's like it's like magnetic like they don't have to do any of this fucking shit all this shit is fucking extra all right they don't have to do any of this shit and it, but it's cool as fuck just to like see like the, the care that they put into like just packaging alone. Like this goes a long fucking way, you know? So I, I can see why, you know, YouTubers and, you know, gamers, and like, they, they have praises for dbrand. Like I get it now. I, I, I'll see how much praise I'll have when I actually install this fucking thing. Um, cause I know that the, cause the steam deck, like if you look at it, um, see all these fucking curves? I gotta fucking yeah. get this thing around all these goddamn curves. So mm-hmm. uh, that's gonna all be a pain. Get fucking a little a little fucking bubbles and shit here and there. Yeah, well that's why I say it's you basically need just a heat a fancy gun. Ass final wrap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. and what's really cool is that I got these stickers. They go on the touch pads, which is basically this is what it looks like underneath the touch pads. Like that's like that's the actual sensor. Oh wow. Underneath there. Yeah. So that just goes on top. So wait, so you have to actually take off the touchpad to put 
that no, underneath no. it. You put the stickers on top of the touch pads, and it looks like what's underneath oh, wow. it. Oh, and it still fucking worked? Oh. Yeah, yeah, wow, it still okay. worked just fine. So I got it because I, I thought it looked cool. So, <laughs> But yeah, so if, if you haven't gotten a Steam Deck or I haven't convinced you yet, then whatever. But I, I think it's really fucking cool. Um, you can literally use it as your desktop. You can I, I can literally stream this podcast on the fucking Steam Deck. O- OBS yeah. is part of like one of the things you can install on there. So, I'm no, fucking, I mean, I'm fucking sold. I wish they made no, more. Well, no, the more question now. that the more question that everybody want to ask is, uh, K Watch Porn on it? Of course, <laughs> I mean, of course yeah. uh, yes, you can. I mean, <laughs> I, I can get Firefox in here, so yes. So what's cool? Hold on, let me just I'll pull the actual like the thing. So I'm playing. Uh, Oh, let me... Yeah, I gotta go see, back. She wants a little, little screen, screen oh, play. play. I, I fucked up here. Oh, are you like Elon Musk gonna fucking break it? No, no, no. I just, I was, I was playing a game, and so just, so this is a uh, cult of, of the lamb. So, let me see this. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see, so it, it's not washed out on the actual screen, but if you just press like a, uh, like the, if, if you hold on the power button. Actually, hold on. Do I need to? See? Oh shit! I turned it off. Hold on. I want to save my game real quick um, to make sure that I'm not just gonna lose everything. Uh, let's cancel. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna quit to the main screen. Give me a second here. Well, it's it's pretty. I mean, with the way technology is now and how like popular touchscreens and like fucking the iPad and Windows OS like, oh, their uh, Surface. So, like, huh? I'm not surprised how much inf- how much can be in- how much can be packed into a, a handheld device. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, look at your phone. There's just a bunch of shit packed oh, yeah. in your phone. So if if you literally if you just hold down the um the power button, you go to switch to desktop, and then you literally get like a like a Linux desktop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then see how everything's like kind of tiny. And so I was like, this is yeah, fucking really small. But then like you use like a little trackpad on the right, and like it, that's your mouse. Or you can use your your finger, but you know I got I don't got Sasha's fingers, but I mean they're too big for this fucking thing. So mm-hmm. it doesn't look like it looked like that's not a GUI style desktop. It's just oh no, it's it's a GUI. Uh, yeah, GUI. It's yeah. hard to tell with the reflection. Yeah, okay. Sorry, the reflection. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see it now. But yeah, there's like a bunch of other like Linux things in here, and like it's just it's just really cool. It's it's so fucking nerdy. I'm not like a really great Linux person. I use Linux for like for work, but it's for like parsing through logs. So, yeah. uh, you know, I don't I don't really use it for like you know fun shit. Yeah. yeah. Now watch someone will get this, pay this all this money and get this uh, Steam Deck and then use it for work shit. Like literally be sitting uh, L's you, and doing. Are you you, you can, can code on it? You can, you can run Linux. Yeah, you can yeah. run you. Can Run a, you can run an IDE. There okay. you go, good shit, dude. I know we got a ton on the fucking list, but yeah. we're fucking back. But why don't we, uh, why don't we save save some uh, for the next week? Now that we're we're, we're oh, back sure. regular, unless unless there was something pressing that you wanted to get in there, old ninja. No, or... not really. The only All thing right. pressing I really wanted to talk about was the Sandman. But I had to I had to get that out of there. Dude, I gotta that catch was... up on that one. Y- y'all sold me. Yeah, it's got it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be honest, we only touched upon the first like oh, five yeah. episodes. Like the like, le- last six is a bit more involved, but it's still just as good. Yeah, I, like, I still gotta watch yeah, this day like... shift. I wanna really watch oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I gotta watch day shift too. Yeah, I actually that dropped this week. Shift. Yeah, it dropped on Friday. Day so shift that. is just another fucking fun ass movie that mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx is being Jamie Foxx, and it's it's ridiculous, but it's fun. It's all the way fun around. I was talking to Old Ninja about it yesterday. So Dude, with, with Sandman, I was like, "Yo, if they don't do the whole, if they don't do the restaurant, the the diner scene, right? Like how I pictured in my head, fuck this whole entire series." <laughs> they did a really good job of that. I was Dude, like, "Holy scene, shit, that scene it, got me!" I was like, "Oh shit!" It was it wasn't even just like that that scene. It was just like like. They they went a little above and beyond. Other than the homeboy having a bad fucking wig, but like they did a really good oh, job yeah. with that fucking scene. But to me, it's like it's it literally starts out as this like wholesome kind of happy go lucky, mm-hmm. and then there's just this great performance by David Thewlis who comes in and monkey wrench the whole vibe, and it just goes from 
beautiful and perfect to like super dark, dank, and horrifying at the very end of the fucking episode. It was that's so how it is in the audiobook. <laughs> like, yeah, shit. crazy. It's such a good episode. So good. And right, there's there, there's people fucking. There's yeah, all kinds. Anyway. There's yeah. It's like it's literally like gothic horror. It starts out like a, it feels like a fifties diner, even though it's it's set present day, and it ends. It literally ends like Hellraiser. Right, By the end of the episode, yeah. it's Hellraiser. Sir, part of you tapping out politely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we went right. deep on the time. We'll right. take. Yeah, let, let, let's wrap it up for, for this week. We'll get back to Sandman, trust you me, uh, next week, and I'll have some more fucking... I'll watch some episodes. All right, let's keep it short and sweet. Blue, what you got uh, populating this week, goddammit? So, yeah, your boy Blue won't be on a podcast next week. <laughs> Reason? Because it's my fifth year anniversary with, with the sweetness. Aww. Which is crazy. Like, holy shit, five years went by so goddamn fast. Like, holy shit. True. And we got a kid. Mm. That shit went by even faster. Like, holy... Time is going... And fast forward, and I'm trying to wait. I'm trying to hit the pause button. Every time I try to hit the pause button, I'm looking for a remote control, and I can't fucking find it because fucking little bl- little boy blue is fucking taking it away from me, and I can't find it. But um, yeah, um, it's crazy. Like he he's speaking more words. He's on this. He's starting to pick up on sign language. So he like he like yeah. does little gestures. Like holy shit! Like this is crazy. Um. Last week, I did a bunch of training for my role, and I just got certified in uh, a software called Secure, which is like Secure? a really popular. No, Secure. It's a, Secure? it's a security app, a security application for monitoring like businesses, like alarm system and stuff like that. So I'm like certified in that now. Oh, it's kind of cool. Oh, good. You can break in. We can do our heist. Oh wait, hold on. I can't. We'll later. Holy shit! I, I seriously can't. Like this tool <laughs> does so much fucking shit. If it's if somebody have it installed. Like I could, I can do, I can do some crazy shit, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just kind of cool. Like hanging out with like IT guys, it was like shooting shit. A lot of these guys from military background, and just hearing their fucking war stories was crazy. But um, yeah, other than that, just uh, just working in our backyard, trying to get things done. Um, yeah, that's about it. Just make sure these kids stay alive. It's <laughs> always important. All right, old ninja, what you got? Um, I'm actually trying to stay cool up here in the Bay. I know, like, the rest of the country is, like, flooding and raining and fucking shit. But here in the Bay, it almost hit triple digits. It's kind of weird. But, uh, and it rained today. It. Yeah, it kind of sprinkled a little bit. Um, She-Hulk is on in, like, 90 minutes, so I'm probably yeah. going to that before I crash out. <clears throat> um, trying to catch up on some of these other stuff, like, that ended, like, uh, Blue reminded me about uh, Superman and Lois. I didn't. I'm on the last like three or four episodes. Ah, it's so good. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to. Really I didn't good. realize that I went super hard on the show and I stopped for some reason. I think I stopped because of Young Justice. But uh, I plan on going back and finishing it. Um, watching uh, uh, Super or sorry, She Hulk uh, this weekend. I'm probably gonna check out Bullet Train at one point, maybe. But uh, other than that. <clears throat> uh, Hand holding uh, uh, Prodigy through Destiny 2. Uh, probably gonna, we didn't stream out the other night. We had a pretty good session. Gonna try to get back on it either Friday or maybe Monday ish. We'll, we'll see. We'll figure out some time, but we'll have some Twitch content later on this weekend. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of it. Just watch, just catching up on shows and movies, really. That's it. Mr. Birthday Boy. Uh, I'm just glad to have a fucking home to live in again. You know, have my own my own space again. It's good to have the infinity base again. Uh, I'm getting used to living in Chula Vista. It's really cool to have you know my youngest daughter being in a dual language immersion class uh, because she speaks more Spanish than I do at this point. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right, I have to like use Google Translate to like help her with her homework. Fucking sad. Um, other than that, you know, I still need to unpack. Um, I need to play Steam, De- Steam Deck more. Uh, the more I play the Steam Deck, the less I'll unpack. So you'll see by uh, next week how much I play the Steam Deck. Just saying. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting back to jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm going to go back. I, I found a, a good school uh, that I'm going to start going to full-time. Uh, I'm going there tomorrow and actually meeting the instructor. So I've been there for uh, two, two, basically – 
two or three weeks in a row, but the instructor was gone for a while because something happened with him. And so I look forward to meeting him tomorrow. And, uh, and I was actually like part of like their secret, like underground, like, Hey, just a couple of guys are going to roll on like a certain day. And Cup of Kai. Yeah. We so I was like, cool. Like five. just go and roll. What's talk about Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> well, sort of, but you, you get, you know, pull apology into it. No, you know what? You don't, you don't get a prodigy to join. No, he's not going to do it. I mean, I, I would love him to come, but he, he's fucking busy and shit. But I tried to get him and my brother to go. Well, I've talked to you about it, all you guys about jiu-jitsu before. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the funny thing is, like, my, so my brother, like, uh, I was going to, like, the secret thing. And, like, a firefighter came through. And it was somebody that my brother knew for, like, more than 10 years. You know, like, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, he totally knows my brother. And, like, we're talking and shit like that. It was really cool. Um but yeah, this I understand jujitsu. I, I would like to say it's for everybody, but uh, it's hard to like convince somebody to like roll around the floor with some sweaty dudes. So, eh, but well, you guys are always true. invited for me to kick your ass. Just saying. That's true. <laughs> it's funny, you, <laughs> Kronos. You're not the only person that that uh, promotes Brazilian jujitsu, not just jujitsu itself. But uh, yeah. everyone keeps talking about it being like you know the ultimate martial art and you should get into it because people get their kids into it then they get into it so they're trying to get like their friends into it and i get it it's great so we'll see you never know i mean and i've seen i would the weirdest thing i've seen i've seen elderly people starting to get into it i'm just like what the hell but they're out there rolling and stuff they're working out so you know it is what it is probably needs rest though so. Yeah. yeah, he does. I mean, I've right, actually man. stolen. I've stolen some hours from him to get onto some Destiny. So well, t- take us out yeah. here, on Ninja. Oh wait, no, Prodigy. Is there anything you want? Yeah, to yeah. Real quick, I was just gonna quick shout out Dragon Ball Super superhero movie is dropping this week. Uh, if you haven't already checked it out, uh, please uh, go on YouTube and check out Street Fighter Six. We got a brand new cool ass character, uh, Kimberly. Uh, I think yeah. she's pretty awesome. Uh, black character, female character that. Uh, has a whole bunch of funky moves. Street Fighter Six looks like it's going to be really fucking fun. I uh, will check out Sandman because uh, you guys recommend it, and also yeah. Blue was absolutely fucking right. Harley Quinn is Harley fucking Quinn. incredible, and I'm going to definitely get caught up and all the way into season three very soon. Take us out, goddamn it! Uh, real quick, Harley Quinn is only like four or five episodes in, so it's not that many that you're behind. Season three. Season three. Sorry. Uh. Really quick, I forgot. I was gonna. I told Prodigy I was gonna do this. I'm a big shout out. Uh, Lubalin, he's a uh, musical artist on uh, on air, all social media. Look him up, Lubalin. Uh, he does some really hilarious stuff. He takes internet drama and turns it into music videos. It's super great. It's so good. Uh, you just experienced Black and Black Times Infinity. Uh, Infinity, we're, motherfucker. We're back, up, back up in this bitch. Uh, uh, thank his podcast no, on the please. internet. Check us out. Uh, check us out anywhere and everywhere you listen to podcasts with B's and BTI. It's B T E. Oh, I. Your out. Um, uh, real quick you before we get out of here. Uh, thank you, Prodigy. You know what you did. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, my brother, if you're listening to this, um, thanks. Sorry that the end, the way that it ended, was fucked up, but. It is what it is. So someday we'll be good, but not today. All good. Thank you guys. Very good some rest. Right. Later, fellas. Thanks. The end podcast button. And it's still there. I can't <laughs> fucking make it go away. You gotta cut out still. this last little bit. What the fuck? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yet many questions remain unanswered. There we go.